Hi everyone, thank you for being so prompt. <clears throat> Let's see, before we get started, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Felicia Garcia. I'm the Curator of Education at SAR's Indian Arts Research Center. Um, I'm super excited that you're joining me for our uh, series of SAR Artists Live, uh, which during the months of August and September is uh, presented in partnership with SWAYA and Native American Arts Magazine with additional partnership from the Atada Foundation and King Gallery. So we're super grateful uh, for their generosity in supporting this really fun program. All right, we're just waiting for uh, Jonathan to join in. Oh, there they are. All right. Hi, Kara. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hello. All right, so I did a... Oh, hello. <laughs> I did a brief introduction before you all signed on, but um, tonight I'm joined by uh, Jonathan Loretto, who was our 2012 King Fellow and is an amazing artist from Jemez and Cochiti Pueblos. And we also have a special guest, uh, Diego Romero, who is another incredible artist from Coche de Pueblo, and uh, Cara Romero behind the scenes uh, supporting on tech. So this is a really special episode, and I'm thankful for everyone who has tuned in at the end of um, the holiday weekend. So I guess we'll just get started here. Um, <clears throat> So I know you all are um, eager to chat about a collaboration that you've been working on. And um, that's something that I've been asking the artists that I've been inter interviewing about is um, any new projects or collaborations or new mediums that you've been inspired to work with during these last few months. So I know you all have um, an exciting project that you wanted to talk about tonight. Yeah. Hi everyone, uh, I want to thank Diego and Kara for um, being here and supporting, supporting SAR, supporting me, supporting on Swaya. And um, we're, I'm really looking forward to doing this, this presentation. Uh, I'm from Coach to Pueblo, name is Pueblo. I'm a partner, a jeweler, and currently I'm a junior at the Institute of American Indian Arts. And SAR had asked me if, if I wanted to do this presentation about a month and a half ago, maybe two months. And, and I said, sure. And then I wasn't too, too sure about what I wanted to do until I came visit Diego one day and I saw one of his pots sitting there and, and it didn't look like he wasn't doing much with this. So I asked him if he wanted to do a collaboration and he was up to it. And then, so I took the pot and let it sit around the house for, for a while. And then um, decided what it was I wanted to do. And I, I told him I was going to make a lid. And um, I wasn't too sure what kind of lid I was going to make. And then I have um, a garden or gardens out there that I planted. And I was noticing uh, the shape of the, the pot and, and and I was thinking maybe I'll, uh, I'll make a, the top a um, squash blossom. So that's what I decided to do. So uh, I don't, uh, you can see, can you see that? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. That's that's that? mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one of my squash blossoms in the garden. Okay. And so what I did was I decided to make this guy right here. Oh, so, that's beautiful. So this is, this is what it's gonna turn out to be kind of like that. So this is this is like the squash blossom. Wow, so, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we and Diego were like, we went to uh, to the to the ceramic shop this morning to get the yellow because um, this doesn't really. Uh, we just wanted to make sure it was prepared for for tonight. So uh, this is this is our this is our collaboration project. So he's actually um, going to start working on the the, the design work. Um, I think it was your universe or your... That's right. I'm going to be demonstrating this technique here. My 
universe, as John said, but I also um, refer to this as the Kirby Crackle. Okay. And uh, I picked this up off a of comic book artist, Jack Kirby, mm -hmm. who was the originator of it. And um, I've been a big fan of Jack Kirby. He used to draw for the Fantastic Four back uh, in the 60s for Marvel Comics. Anyway, give credit where credit is due. This is where I discovered this technique. And I'm going to kind of demonstrate today how I do this with, uh, uh, yes, that's, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. And just to the audience really quick, please feel free to type any comments or questions in the little chat box and I'll um, be sure to relay them to Diego and Jonathan. So get, okay, so how I'm going to do this is I start all of my images with a drawing. And then I take the drawing <laughs> down to Kinko and I enlarge it. Okay, then I've cut this little section out right here, and maybe we'll get up to that today. We'll see how far we get. We'll start with some planets, maybe some stars. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll put a planet in there. Let's see what we've got here. That's good. <laughs> And is this your first time collaborating with each other? No, no, no. no. Okay. We, we've done lots of stuff, projects. We, we work together quite a bit, mm. in John, all through the years. Would you say we've been doing this since 30 like, years since now? The, yeah, since yeah, about 30 years. Yeah, oh, wow, done. okay. And uh, this is our life's work. So I'm going to use this paint. And uh, this is a mixture. And what I do is uh, I'm using this red paint from Lava Hada Hill. For you. I'm sure there's some potters that will probably know. And just and I'll put uh, uh, I'll mix some, just get it kind of to this yogurty consistency, and I'll put a little bit of that red in there. And I'll put a blob of this black in. There you go. You can always go with more black, but you can't really come back. So start small. Don't don't overdo it. And then I'll just kind of usually I would screen this through a screen, to be clear. Mm. But you can see how it's kind of browning up. Can you mm -hmm. see that right there? So really, if you have like a, a screen, which most potters do, or a bandana, a bandana will work. You can screen this through a bandana, like you would any slip. But like I said, for today, I'm just kind of gonna stir it vigorously. I feel like I'm on the baking channel here. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Whoops. Okie dokie. Now I'm gonna turn my stencil. Put this pot, it sits nicely. I have this piece of foam right here, and oh. I um, cut the center out. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So, this works really well for things that you can put on your side. Not everything, some things have to be painted standing up, but this particular pot can be put on its side. <clears throat> We're going to start with this stencil right here. And I like to have my pencils a little bit on the dull side. Can you see the difference right there? Yes. That way, I'm not going to etch into the, the pot, the polish. I, it's more likely to, the rounder point rolls more on the surface. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. This is so these are conveniently marked right here. You can see there's like little I don't know if you can see, but there's these little kind of things to give you a halfway. Okay, we're going to leave you and cut to John. Do that. Okay, we'll, we'll be right back to Diego. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting ready to prep this for polishing. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, I want to get to this to this point right here where there's a nice, nice sheen of polish mm -hmm. on here. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, the way I get to that to that kind of high polish is uh, when I went to Mato Ortiz, uh, God, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. um, they showed me some of the techniques down there, their polishing techniques. And a lot, if not all of the people down there, when they polish their pottery, they use transmission fluid. And um, it burns off in the kiln uh, where, where the outdoor fires and, and they get those really high, high, um, high polish pot. Okay. But what, but what I do is, um, is I use um, just regular, like, I usually like to use olive oil, mm -hmm. you know, not, not, the, uh, not the kind you put on the salad, but the kind you use for cooking. So, uh, but I, I, I found some <laughs> vegetable oil here. So um, I'm going to use that. And I've done, I've used vegetable oil before. And what I do is, um, is I go ahead and give it a, a coat like that. And you can see it's going to um, draw out that color. And then um, you want to, you want to polish it when it's still kind of damp like that. So it'll, uh, you know, it'll adhere to the clay and embed within within the clay itself. Can you show me your magic rock? Oh, wait, this is a, yeah. I borrowed this from Santi. <laughs> 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 so, so uh, I, I borrowed your rock, Santi. All right. Um, <laughs> So yeah, anyway. do you have a collection of burning burnishing stones that you I do. Okay. I do. And do yeah, you me, use like different me, sizes? Me and, Diego, me and Diego, that's what that's what we do. We um we, we collect um burnishing stones. Okay. And uh sometimes um you know, I'll give them some that if I have extra. And, but we we kinda have the same techniques for the <laughs> most part. Uh except the polishing. I have I have a different I have a different uh, way of polishing my pieces. Tell them what you use, Diego. Um, <laughs> well, I use a multiple. These are two stones. This one is a, uh, this one was given to me by my sister-in-law, Melissa Palachi. This one um, I've had for, this is my primary one for decades. And uh, I have another one laying around here. Um, oh, it's that. This one right here. This one was given to me by a classmate a long time ago. And I like this one because if I polish a, 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 a sculpture, like a face, mm -hmm. you can get this one into the cracks and the eyebrows. And uh -huh. so it has this really fine point on it. So it's good for polishing like three dimensional sculptural items so those are my three primary ones but i do have stones all around here <laughs> anyway what i'm doing now is um i'm uh 
painting this uh, little, uh, what I've done is I'm filling these circles in. If you remember, you saw me put a circle and then uh -huh. kind of loop through it with the other circles. And what I do is um, I kind of, if you look real close, I'm kind of bringing the slip or the charge mm -hmm. and it kind of falls right on that pencil line, black, just like that, see? And then I just scoot it along that little ridge. I'm gonna come around the other side on your next time because your hand is blocking the, okay, ready? And I'm gonna s spin around here. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. So I've built up the charge and I'm just gonna kind of go right up in there and it kind of falls right on into that little crevice that the pencil line has put in. Then I'll come back and I'll fill that in. And then from there, I'm going to connect all these. These little things become these little things. Okay. And so did you know this was the design you wanted to put on this pot um, before Jonathan started the collaboration with you? No, I didn't. I, this is, this yeah, morning. yeah, <laughs> this, this was this morning, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> think of something, okay. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of our space stuff, okay. <laughs> Maybe this one, I've always wanted to put um, the uh, Lost in Space thing around the pot with the uh, the Jupiter 2 and the little umbilical cord with the astronauts swimming mm -hmm. through it. So maybe th this might be fun to put something like that on there. So something, some pop reference, right? Like the... Let's see, we have a question from the audience. Any, anything but Star Wars. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, Amy would like to know how much is planning and how much does the piece tell you what to do? I'd say 50-50. Yeah. 50-50? Yeah. I mean, you know what? I would honestly have to say it varies with every piece. But there is a lot of, in, of, of, of okay, so you have a concept and many times in art, the piece doesn't actually come out looking anything like the original concept, but that's fine. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to. It could, you know, and and it is so. So I think there's um, some a lot of that, particularly in pottery. You know, you'll have an idea. So for instance, this pot in particular, when I started it, I was doing board pots, and I was putting another chamber on these vessels, right? Mm -hmm. And um, for some reason, I never got back to this guy. And, and I had taken him so high, but I never did. So John had the great idea of putting a lid on it. See, just to illustrate how something that you can see winds up totally different. But, but that's fine. So, so go ahead, you know, get started, have a starting point, but also um, follow the flow of the project. Mm -hmm. I think everything has its own life and opinions. And um, like I said, particularly with pottery, and even with this method that I'm using right now, it's kind of um, nothing set in stone. It just kind of, you know, I'm just going to kind of work, just work my way around it. Mm -hmm. And if I put an astronaut in here, that's fine. If I put a spaceship in here, that's fine. If I put a, uh, uh, a robot in there, that's fine. But, but who knows? So I'm just going to get started and do a couple planets and, and see where everything starts heading, so to speak. Okay, I'm going to go back to John polishing the squash blossom. Okay, you're so, on. Yeah, so to add to Diego, um, um, I'll talk. The planning is just kind of like as you go along. Mm -hmm. It's not really planned. It just happens. Like. 
like today we weren't too sure what he wanted to put on the on 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 the pot or the color of the the blossom. squash blossom until we went to to the clay place and then it just it just kind of like um came together like like at the last minute mm -hmm. and, it, and it's still coming together like here's here's the um polish on um what i was showing you earlier when, when i used the um the oil okay so it, it get, it, because a really high polish so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, i'm going to continue adding more um, layers to this so that way when i do polish this doesn't happen right here it, um sometimes when you do polish pottery it you can um cake you can cake off oh okay yeah so you want to make sure you have enough uh uh slip on there when you when you do it and then that way uh you're kind of you're kind of covered so yeah and then uh, and i didn't i didn't actually i didn't make this top until like about four days ago because <laughs> <laughs> i was like i wasn't cheap i was gonna almost do a drum because that's what coach is known for mm -hmm. but then it, it wouldn't it just the the, the whole the whole flow of this did, it didn't sit right, and then I was just like, I was outside watering my plants, and I said, "Oh, yeah, that looks like a like the pot inside." So that's why I went with that. It took it took me a while to figure it out right now. So yeah, it's just it, the planning just happens as you go along a lot of a lot of the times. You know. So this is uh, this is our. This is our like last minute concepts here. <laughs> so, so I'll just I'll just continue to add more more slip to this, and then it'll be ready to polish. I'm not going to polish this tonight because this will probably take me about a good two hours to complete, if not longer. Okay. Yeah. This. Because the whole thing has to be um, ready to polish at once, and then once you start that polishing process, you can't stop until you're until you're done. Okay. So, wow. Um, yeah, and that's that's why, like when I when I polish those, those larger pots like that, it's it's like from beginning to end. You can't you can't really quit, uh, especially when I use that that oil technique. Uh, because like I cover the whole pot in oil and then I just go at it with the um, with the polishing rock. And, uh, and sometimes I can add oil if it starts to dry up, but I don't like to. But it does it, it does work. So uh, and is this your first squash blossom pot that you've made? Yeah, like like I said, it was just it just came out of nowhere uh -huh. <laughs> when I was uh, watering the garden, and I was like, "Cause and it just fit, it just fit well." It's like, oh, yeah, I'll give it a try. And sure enough, it, it turned out okay. The, uh, the making of the blossom itself. Uh, I like I like this concept. I'll, I'll probably do it again. I'll probably do another one just to see. Uh, 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 I might not. It might not be a perfect round pot. Maybe I'll, I'll go more toward the the natural look of the block, the, the pot, the mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, squash itself. So we'll see. We'll see. This is you know this is all just a, a, a work in progress right now. And plus, I still have classes that gonna take care of in school, so it's like it's not something I can just jump right into. Okay, how's that looking? Is that starting to look like a little quasar or a little burst? Now, one thing about this is you want to always build. See how it's light there? You got to do it twice, okay? okay? That's what you have to do. So that's, and even beyond that, sometimes three times, depending on how thick your paint is, I, I, I usually say twice is good. But if, like I said, you know, if you're, Go better to be safe than sorry. So if you want to do three, that's point. Now, 
I kind of connected it all with that little brush, and then I'm going to move in with a like a bigger, more um, blobby brush, and I'm just going to kind of, and then I'm going to roll There's a little star right there. Okay, so there's a little. So Ian said he's interested in uh, Jonathan's use of olive oil. Um, Diego, do you also use oil, um, like olive oil or cooking oil, to burnish your pots? I I don't, but I have, and you know it's all. It, uh, never motor oil though. I heard that. Uh, stay <laughs> organic. I, you know, it's it's, transmission oil. Oh, transmission oil. Yeah. yeah. Now I've never heard of that before, but but organic is good. I think it was all, olive oil is fine. If, if, or lard, lard, white cap lard. I've seen okay. people. I've seen people use white cap lard. And do you see how this is starting to like become a universe now? Slowly. I just start with a big blob, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to just kind of roll some stars in there. Well, incidentally, that's kind of how the Kirby Crackle is done. It's just a series. Everything you're going to see me do, I'm actually going to just be kind of doing a series of round dots and wrap, you know, everything. I'm, I'm just going to be kind of going round and round. Uh, we have another audience question. Amy asks, how did you guys start working together? Oh, we're cousins. We're we, family. We, we yeah. met in I, I of, uh, back in 85 years 87? ago. 86, 87? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah 83, 84, maybe. Maybe 84, yeah. 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 So I was, we I was fresh out of high school. Me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. And um, we've, we've been doing this ever since. Yeah. I was about 18. Diego was like. So, um, in the original, like in the beginning, John showed me a lot of stuff early, early on. I remember John showed me how to polish and where to get this red paint. Mm -hmm. Do you remember um, the we, first? We used to be playing together up at Cochiti too, up there on the hill. I remember too, yeah. We've done that a couple of times. Do you remember well, the first collaboration that you did together? No, we've done several. Probably not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Ian wants to know, what are your favorite works by Jack Kirby, Diego? Oh, oh I like Fantastic Four. But um, Kirby's been upon the king for nothing. He, he just, he, let's see, Fantastic Four, Avengers, early X-Men. Um, I love all that stuff. And and what I loved about Kirby, not only his outer space, that he really kind of like just brought it to life, but I also loved um, his flow of narrative. Mm. So this will take a while uh, to dry once I go over with this coat and then I I might add another one. Mm -hmm. I want to add some green, but uh, I'm going to have to go back to the, to the uh, ceramic shop. There's a new ceramic shop here in town. It's right by Albertsons, right off of... Right by St. Francis, Papa John's, yeah. by Papa John's, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. right by uh, Subway. 
it's a brand new shop and they have studios there too. Okay. So if, you, if you need to rent a studio and have a place to work, it's there. It's available. It looks great. It's a beautiful place. It is. Diego just turned me on to it today. Yeah, we went up there today. I didn't even know I didn't even know it was there until Diego took me there and I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, otherwise you can get all this stuff in Albuquerque. Uh New Mexico play like this flat right there. And um we use a lot of gold. Um both of us and you can they they're selling gold up the street too though. So anyway, let's uh Put a plant in the middle. You have to be patient and let this kind of dry right here. You can see it's changing color. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's actually probably the hardest thing for me about ceramics is patience. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a very you gotta. It's a humbling. It is. You got to be patient. So, I, I, like I said, I'm going to let this dry all the way up till, because I, I know from experience that if I don't, I'll end up smearing it somehow. And do you generally try to finish the whole design in one day, or do you go back? Oh, no, it? God, no. <laughs> No, no. This is it could take up to weeks or months okay. to paint the pot. <laughs> Floral months. <laughs> Depending on the size and the complexity of the design. Um this actually so this outer space technique is actually one of my main fillers. It goes really quickly, as you've noticed. So lots mm -hmm. of times like if, if it'll take me like maybe a a, a day to like or, or several days to paint the um, whole like little figures and the trash <laughs> can oddly enough fire goes pretty quickly and so does outer space so these techniques and this technique with the ground these go really fast by the way the ground is done the exact same way except the pot and the skull okay. are put in instead of the plants so, so these, those techniques I, I kind of use to catch up when I, when I, after I've fallen behind from illustrating the um, picture, I'll jump to some outer space to double time it. We have outer. a great question from the audience. Um, Colleen asks if you two plan to collaborate on a bobblehead one day. Who <laughs> knows? <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe. I haven't done bobbleheads in like almost over two years. Okay. Uh, it's just, I don't know. Uh, I think once I got into into my college sessions and learning and all that, it kind of took a back burner. And then I was wanting to do bobbleheads this year, but this whole COVID thing just kind of like um, threw a damper on mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of things. It just uh. The, the whole reality of, of what was happening and hearing the news and just 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 everything everything that kind of came as a shock to us all and um, that's why I'm wearing the mask you know because this right. is Diego on carousel they have kids here so I don't I don't want to um, uh, infringe you know I just want to make sure that they're they're safe and for whatever reasons that I might have it but I don't because I just took a test a few days ago and it came out negative mm -hmm. because I have to make sure when I go back to the campus that I'm 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 negative. That's their policy now. Right. So you can't you can't go visit, you can't go to their classes or the studios unless you're you've taken a test and then you've come out negative and then and then follow the guidelines and stuff like that. So yeah, that's why you know, I'm just I'm just trying to be Trying to be safe and keep everybody safe around me. Um, right. Yeah, it's been such an interesting and challenging uh, year. Did you participate in virtual SWAYA this year? I did. Uh, what was that experience like? I really didn't 
pay too much attention to it mm-hmm. because uh, at the same time I was trying to get myself situated with school. Right. So, uh, but it was something new they tried. So I think, I think uh, some did good, some didn't. Uh, I didn't do any. I didn't do any sales. Mm-hmm. But you know, I wasn't too worried about it because you know I'm. Um, I'm concentrating on school right now. Right. So that's 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 my main priority. Priority is my school. Yeah. And this amazing yeah. collaboration. That, I think it's yeah. really cool that you've been able to come together and make this amazing pot. Yeah, we and we and Diego, you know, when we get together, we like to hang out and do things together and go crazy now and then. Okay, what what if you bring it in close so. so one thing about this too is that um wow. I'm always hitting on the inside of the pencil line. See, so I'm not going to go on the outside and try to mimic that circle. I'm going to fall on the inside. And again, I'm just going to let that kind of paint this kind of roll. Okay, now uh, I'm going to make this kind of a, uh, some kind of, I don't, I think I'm going to go for some, yeah, kind of like a plant like this, like in this one, kind of like a, some kind of balkanization. He went so fast, sorry. Now I'm going to do this, is uh, again, I'm just going to start, I'm going to get a, Good healthy charge. And I'm kind of just gonna start by blobbing it down, rolling it around. Oh my gosh, he makes it look so easy. I know he's going so quickly. <laughs> um, we have a technique question. Um, do you? When you're talking about how you paint on the inside of the pencil groove, does that mean that you just let the slip fill in the groove? I do. Okay. It rolls right up into it. Boop. It does. It, and it's a little more difficult than I'm making it look. You'll get it. Just trust me. <laughs> it, it does work like this. It does. It, it might take a second, but but it's just it is going to work. And I'm going to like it, just put that big blob in there, kind of just. Spoon it around. Amy says she thinks it might take longer than a second to get it. <laughs> you will. You will. Okay. You see, I kind of just kind of made that. So, wow. okay. We're getting there. It's starting to look like it's starting to look like what we want. It's going to be a, a, a quasar or a bursting planet. <clears throat> and uh, the next part of this is um, we got to let it sit up. But we, we'll, we'll burnish it, and I'll show you how I do that. And usually I'll do a bigger patch at, mm-hmm. or a section at a time. But since this is a demonstration, I'll just do this little patch, and you'll see how, okay. how it goes.
so on, on this lid, um, I had to make a air hole. So okay. because this part in here, this, this, this is hollow uh -huh. and the face part is hollow. And uh, that's how I uh, was able, was, uh, had to cut, cut out, cut it out so that way it, it breathes when so I go through the fiery. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it had, with clay, if you don't, if you don't hollow certain areas out, you, they have the tendency to pop in the kiln. Or, right. or, Show them the inside too, that yeah. you showed them this inside ring that you oh, put yeah, on the, yeah, That's the very important for yeah. every lid. If you're a beginning potter, remember that because this keeps it locked in. Don't make it too little. You don't have to make it too big. That's just perfect yeah. what he has on there. That's not going to pot and tip that way or that way, yeah. and it's not going to fall. It's locked yeah. right in there. That inside grips it. It yeah. fits right in there like that. Um, I might put a, a piece of um, buckskin leather on, on this part right here, okay. just so that when it, when it sets on there, it, it um, it locks it locks in really good. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to take my mask down for this part, and I'm gonna do a bandana. Are you gonna burnish it? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get the best angle. Oh, I think it's the other side. Hold on just a No. Uh, okay, we'll do it from here. Yeah, thank you so much, Kara. This is so helpful. <laughs> yeah, thanks, I'm, having, I'm having a blast. Okay, this is called an atomizer, and you can pick this up at Artisans, or okay. you can pick this up at um, Hobby Lobby. Mm. And um, they used to be quite common when I was a kid, and they're not so much anymore. So if you see them, you should probably pick one up because, um, like I said, they're not always on the rack anymore. You know, sometimes I buy several of them when I see them. Okay, so how this is is a little tube that sticks into a glass of water. Can I come to the other yep, side? you can. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> and Sorry, you guys. <clears throat> hold on. Okay, I think the light's better at the moment. Okay, here we go. So I put a little water in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put some, I'm going to moisturize it, you'll see. Oh, wow. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch to make sure all the little, I can see all that's coming out. You see it, the black starts to pop. Mm -hmm. Voila. Wow. There it is. So I'll just keep climbing all through the, and as it dries too, the white goes back to being more whiter. It, okay. Kind of, wow, very that, cool. Yeah, does that make sense? Does that work? Everybody's, Learn something good. Yes. <laughs> I'm learning something. I'm having fun over here. <laughs> so that, that technique, like I said, you, you could apply it to anything. Um, it, you could pretty much, um, so in my own art, I look at myself as an illustrator, a black and white illustrator. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm almost, um, my pottery is the way to do my narrative, which is um, uh, kind of like a, a comic or a cartoon, a black one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the, uh, also, uh, like what Diego said with his auto, automatizer, you can also use that for like, glazes. When you're okay. All, oh, when yeah. You're, when you all want to glaze your pots because it goes on nice and thin. That's right. So mm. that's, what, that's what they use them for yeah. a lot also. They, and they might even have them at that, that, uh, that new ceramic place too, I don't, I'm not too sure. Or on eBay, I see them on eBay. So yeah, they're, 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 really, they're really handy tools to have. 
Well, I want to be very mindful of everyone's time, but I would love if uh, Jonathan and Diego, if you could share uh, where are the best places to stay up to date with what you're working on and maybe see some of your work in person. I have my latest work over at Shiprock. Okay. That's, uh, on the plaza, um, I would say it's on, what, what end would you say? The direct patty corner, the ore house? Um, Northeast. Last year from the palace. Northeast. Okay. The upstairs. And um, that would be my latest. Um, that's my show. My, my, that would be like my Indian market food show or anything else that I, I that's the latest and, and most innovative stuff I have to offer right now. He's got a full gallery there with um, like four or five potteries and then a series of hand pulled lithographs that he collaborated on with Black Bye. Rock editions. Okay, amazing. And is the show still up at uh, Mayak? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure if they're <laughs> <laughs> <I think laughs> through, through December was the original um, journey for that show. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's at least up till December and maybe longer since the museum closed down for a little while. Okay, great. We'll, we'll have work at Shiprock. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We'll have work at Shiprock. Uh, most of my, my stuff you can find right here. And that says hey. Jonathan Loretto at wordpress.com. Amazing. And at Artspan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because um, when I signed up with Swaya, I got uh, a year subscription to Artspan. So I have that, that um, I guess their platform as well. It's mostly for contacts and stuff like that. And you're on Instagram. On and... Instagram, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, I, I'm a, a went back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do and, a lot of gallery, gallery shows there on, on campus. And we but have yeah, one of your bobbleheads at SAR. We're not open to the public yet, but if you haven't been, definitely come on a tour and you can see uh, one of his bobbleheads in the vault. Yeah, and at, and at Maya, I have, I have some pieces over there too, some Great. artwork there. And we have one last question. Someone would like to know where we can see this uh, collaborative piece once it's finished. It'll probably take about, what, two, three weeks to complete it like that. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll, we'll post it on Instagram. Yeah. And then I'll, I'm going to let Diego decide where he wants to take it. I'll leave it up to him. Okay. One last question, actually. Um, are, someone is asking if either of you are open to commissions. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I always throw the <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's it's how we we, live. we continue yeah. our work is, is, mm -hmm. is people commission with us so that way that's it's a continuation of our work you know it's, and, and that's how we survive it's, it's a survival method yeah great well i think that's all i have for you um i don't want to take up too much of your time but that Thank was you. so fun Thank you, Diego and Jonathan, and thank you to Kara for being the best director. Thank you, Kara. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. All right. And this will be on our uh, YouTube yeah. page, so you can share it with any family, friends who didn't get a chance to tune in. Cool. All right, great. Well, thank you so much. Have a good night. Okay, good night. Bye. Bye, you guys. Cool. <laughs>